Good morning. I'm Jenny Wood. I'm the Information Officer for North Mutt City Schools, and today I'm with Cherie Kaufman, who is our Student Assistance Counselor here at the high school, and we're talking about vaping. So, good morning, Cherie. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Sure. Tell me a little about the presentation that you did for our students. Okay. The, um, we wanted to get off on a good foot this year, and we think that uh, e-cigarette industry, Juul in particular, has done a really good job at telling kids their side of the story and marketing to them of why they should use their product. Um, I don't believe our kids have had the other side and they're not getting equal information. And so um, Dr. Inkrot, who's our building principal, and I sat down at the, before the year started and decided to go ahead and put together a presentation. Um, and we invited all social studies students. So any student who has a social studies class through the day um, came down to the auditorium and we had a 40 minute presentation that uh, interactive on you know, as much as it could be to make it um, ex you know, fun information to listen to. But, um, and they all came down, and I think we probably taught over a 1,000 students in the span of one week. That's awesome. Um, and I understand at the end of, after you did the presentation, mm -hmm. you asked the students some questions yeah. about um, how it affected them mm -hmm. and whether they learned anything from yes. it, anything like that. Yeah, a post-test, because you never want to do anything with, with kids or people in general, you want to be able to measure whether it had an effect or not. Um, because if it's not effective, you don't do it again. Uh, or you change it to make it effective. So we always like to ask our kids how the presentation hit them. And we'll talk about those numbers in a few minutes. First, I want to talk a little more about what was actually in the presentation. Okay. Um, I understand we, we kind of briefly touched on the marketing aspect. Yeah. So tell me about the marketing and some of the things that were um, that you touched on in the presentation? What I wanted um, kids to kind of walk away with is the idea that the vape companies are trying to get them to di digest a message that will help their bottom line. And because this is not regulated, it's not a regulated industry, although the FDA did pull e-cigarettes into their regulations in 2016, they don't actually, they didn't plan to do anything with it until 2022. So uh, if somebody tells you it is regulated, it's not regulated yet, it's in process. And that date of 2022 has now been pushed um, up to, I believe, May of 2020, just because of all the things that we're hearing. And so they're kind of speeding that, that process up a little bit of regulating. So uh, we started off under, with talking about the kid, to the kids about what propaganda is and just basically some biased information. And so I gave them some examples of how companies today, if they, if they advertise and they mislead the public, um, they're held accountable for that. And the example that I used, two examples, one is Airborne. They um, did, were not exactly honest um, in the very beginning of their product development and rolling it out. And so they had to pay a fine of $23.3 million and then an additional $7 million for not being honest. Um, Kellogg's also said that if you ate their cereal, their mini wheats, that your attention span would increase clinically by 20%. That wasn't true either. So they had to pay a $4 million settlement. And this is what happens when you say things that are not true in a regulated industry, you are held accountable. Then we moved into asking kids why they thought that e-cigarettes were so appealing to adults, to kids. And um, the, the answers were basically flavors. Flavors and stress, and uh, my friends are using it. And so those were the reasons that they cited most often. So when they were talking about the adults, were they saying more like adults start because they're trying to stop smoking? Yes. And that is the marketing. Again, their kids are hearing it loud and clear. Adults start vaping because they want to stop smoking cigarettes. But the full story is really, it's most likely transferring an addiction from a cigarette to a vape device, to another nicotine delivery device not necessarily ultimately stopping. Although there are people who have done that, um, I don't believe that's the industry's intent. So uh, the, the next thing is that the industry's done a great job coining the term vaping. And so we start talking to the kids about, you know, what is vaping? And vaping is water vapor, and that is it. There can be nothing else in the mist other than water for it to be vapor. It actually is an aerosol when there's chemicals in the vapor. And so, or in the water mist. And so anybody who's vaping any flavors um, is 
aerosoling. And actually it shouldn't be called a vape pen, it should be called an aerosol pen because suspended in that mist is chemicals. And so it's definitely an aerosol, it's not a vapor. Um, a lot of the chemicals that have been found in um, e-cig aerosol um, are just as dangerous as the ones that are in tobacco. Um, the ones that caught my attention is silver, nickel, tin, lead, and those, I'm really against scare tactics. I like honest, you know, truth and, and good discussion. So when I saw those, I was a little turned off because I felt like maybe somebody was exaggerating. And so when, when I did the research, what I found is that the heating coil is what is causing those metals to be in the lungs. So, oh, you know, the heating coil, some of those metals are are flaking off and they're in part of the aerosol that's being inhaled in and that's where people are ending up with lead and tin in their lungs. Right, and along with that, the, the heat is so intense to, to do that, to, mm -hmm. to damage the coil and have those flakes come in, but it also, the oils, we talked about um, the vitamin E, yes. um, vitamin E acetate, yes. where the oils it heats it up so much that... Well, and, and really we, what we're doing is we're looking at, that brings up another issue that we talked to the kids about, is um, things that are regulated by, by the FDA are tested. And the, the flavors that they're using in the vape pens are all FDA approved. They are. And that's what, you know, and that's what makes people feel kind of safe about it. But they're safe for ingestion. They're not safe to heat up and inhale. And that changes the chemical properties. And, and what we found um, in the last week, I think a lot of people have seen this um, on the news outlets, is that there's a lot of samples of vape juice that have had uh, THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, um, which is uh, the, the active ingredient in marijuana that causes the high. People who have vaped uh, several different strains of that THC juice, they've tested those strains, and what they found is that they contain something called vitamin E acetate. Now that is not dangerous to the skin. It's used in products. It's not dangerous to, to consume. It's a vitamin. It sounds very benign, but it's, it's compound is a grease. And so when it's in a juice, um, it heats up, it becomes an aerosol. It's inhaled into the lungs and then it cools and it turns back into a grease. And so that's what uh, doctors are saying is causing so many people to come into the emergency rooms. Now, they have tested THC juice. And so some people may say, well, I'm just, you know, vaping a jewel, so I'm not doing the THC. It's not about the THC. It's about the vitamin E. And is that also in juice that people are vaping? But because there's no regulation, there's no honesty about what's actually in the juice. You just don't know what. Right, and so emergency rooms are starting to see an yes. uptick of students, not just students, not just kids, but adults right. as well, mm -hmm. coming in Mostly with real teens, lung yes. issues. Yes, mm -hmm. I think there's 450 possible cases that have been reported. Um, three deaths as of yesterday, potentially linked to vaping, um, and that's 33 states. But, you know, again, a doctor I was talking to was, was saying that there's no real reporting avenue right now for vaping. It's just such a new thing that doctors don't have that avenue to, to report these until, you know, now, now that it's becoming more prevalent, that avenue is being created. But, like yesterday, I took my son to urgent care, and they asked him if he smoked, but they didn't ask anything about vaping. It's just one of those things that it's not well documented in the medical community yet, and we're just now starting to pull information together to see um, that, and, and the CDC is calling it an epidemic. Wow. That's, I mean, that alone is scary. Yeah. Um, urgent cares and emergency rooms are seeing more and more kids coming in yeah. with these issues. They're, they're realizing when it's pneumonia or when it's near pneumonia, oh, maybe we should ask this question, but well, and it's there's, not there's, linked anywhere. And there's more studies um, that are coming. There's, um, there's a study, and we'll, we'll do a link uh, so that you can read these, but there's uh, that, that 
flavors are cytotoxic. Some of the flavors that we're vaping are cytotoxic, and that's toxic to cells. Well, your lungs are made up of cells, so we can do the math. We don't have the long-term studies, but we can do the math and say they're toxic to lung cells. And the more flavors you compound, the higher that to the toxicity goes. They're also um, toxic to white blood cells, which is not a healthy thing. Uh, and there's a study also that we can, we can link to that looked at um, people who had never vaped and they'd never smoked. And they cuffed, they did a blood cuff on their leg and then put them in a scanner to see how the blood moved once that cuff was released. And well, of course, you know, what happens, you, you dam up a river, you break the dam and the water just rushes. You put a, a cuff on and then you take the cuff off and your blood just rushes through your veins. Then they took those same people and had them take one hit off of an e-cigarette, one hit off of a vape pen. And then they did the same experiment again, only the blood did not flow like it was supposed to. It was much slower. And it took an hour for that blood flow to return to normal. So again, we don't have long-term studies, but I can two right. plus two is four. If I'm hitting a vape pen during the day, at least once an hour, my blood flow, according to this study, is compromised um, for the entire day that I'm vaping. So if I vape for 16, hit, you know, 16 hours a day, one hit an hour, I don't have natural normal blood flow for quite a long time. And if I'm somebody who gets up in the middle of the night and vapes, you know, we can extend that to, you know, 20 hours that your blood isn't flowing normally. And that is cardiovascular disease. That's the beginning of that. That's, that's what causes heart attacks and strokes and, and things like that. So it could be that what we're going to see is a generation of our kids who are having cardiovascular issues much earlier in life because of these devices. Is there anything you'd like to add at this point? Okay, there's something else. <laughs> of course, I, I, that's why we're here. And this is, this is uh, it's, it's the barriers. Um, when I was in high school, and a lot of people will, will be able to identify with this. When I was in high school, if I was going to smoke, I had to make sure my parents weren't home, um, that uh, you can't smoke in school because, you know, you're going to get caught because of the smell. You can't, I couldn't smoke in their car because they're going to tell. Sure. Um, I can't smoke in a movie theater, can't smoke while I'm shopping. So if I was a smoker, my exposure to nicotine would be somewhat um, quelled because of these natural barriers um, that, were, that are about tobacco smoke. I asked the kids in this presentation, I said, what are the barriers to vaping? And they agreed there aren't any. They can vape in a movie theater. They can vape in their car. They can vape in the bathroom. They can vape in the living One kid, I can vape in the living room with both of my parents sitting there. I just put it up my sleeve and hold the, the, the aerosol in, and uh, there's nothing that comes out, and they don't even know I'm doing it. So this generation is being exposed to a device that's allowing them to vape longer and being exposed to higher levels of nicotine than anything that we ever had to contend with in high school with regular tobacco parents need to be aware of is the smell that doesn't smell good is if somebody's vaping THC. If somebody's vaping marijuana, it probably has a skunk odor. So if you have a skunk odor in your house, <laughs> mm, um, chances are you don't have a skunk you in your might, house. <laughs> you might want to, yeah, you might want to check. Um, and there are the, these um, little kits that you can get online if you put it, put in, um, uh, in the search engine, parent testing kit, vaping THC, there's a little kit that you can get in the mail, and it's got like twelve dollars. And you get four test kits. You have a little swab, and you can swab the outside of a vape pen or really anything, and put it on a test strip. And if it turns red, it's positive for THC. So if you're wondering whether your son or daughter is vaping THC, um, there's a way to find that out very discreetly. What was the response from the kids as far as afterwards? You yeah. know, did they feel like? It was good information. Did they feel like they learned something new? What was what was their response? And we always have a mix, of course, with anything. Right. Sure. But um, this is I wrote these stats back here on the board because I just I was impressed with them. Um, before the presentation, twenty six percent of the kids surveyed twenty six point eight thought it would be helpful, and after the survey, that number jumped to sixty percent of the kids thought it would be helpful. Um, in the beginning, um, before the presentation, 42% of the kids said this was not going to be helpful, it was going to be a waste of time. <laughs> and that number was cut in half to 20%. And uh, so I think uh, those stats alone, for me, were very, were just validating. Right. Um, and we had uh, another number that came up from that where 67% of the students said that they're now less likely to vape. 
whether it was to try to try vaping, to start vaping, and 25% who already vape admitted that they vape said that they probably won't anymore. So, yeah. and that know, was uh, that right. Was if wonderful. you reach one, yeah. you know, you've you've done a good job. So that's awesome. Um, we are going to add some links when we post this video, so there will be some additional information for parents. Um, you have anything that you'd like to add at this point? I know we could talk about this all day. Yeah, I mean, no. There's so just, much information. Um, I just appreciate people watching. Um, share this with anybody that you think is interesting. I couldn't believe last time. I think we had over 15,000 views at the last time that I saw. And I really thought we'd get 10. So, um, And that just tells us this is, a, this is an important topic. And this is something that people are craving information. And so um, just share with whoever you believe would would, uh, would like to have this information because as parents we have a lot of influence over our kids we may think that we don't um, but really a lot of the the free answers with that post test said my parents have told me that this is dangerous you know and so our parents were doing a good job right um, keep talking to your keep kids talking. Yeah. keep talking about it and we also have a link on our website um, that is it says no and it has a question mark and there are some good articles there and there's some vaping information there as well so um, Keep looking for information. We'll try to keep bringing you information and talk to your kids.